There are solutions to homework set number 8 for ECE 461-661 control systems. This homework set looks at root locus plots with complex poles, gain compensation, and lead compensation using root locus techniques. Now the first problem is given a system with two complex poles, find the following. Open loop poles, relaxed loci, so on, so on. So to do that, what you do is the open loop poles are where the poles are for the system without feedback. You've got a pole at 0, minus 20, minus 2 plus j5, minus 2 minus j5. The real axis loci, when there's an odd number of poles to the right, so here's even, odd, even, so they're between 0 and minus 20. Breakaway point is the midpoint, push left. Um, so midpoint is at minus 10, somewhere over here, like minus 15-ish. Um, you can also search, search until the angle is up to 180 at a point x plus j.01. j mega crossings, I need to do a search. Search along the j mega axis to the angle is up to 180. Turns out it's actually right here, a little bit below. j4.91. I've got four asymptotes. The center mass is at minus 5.5. .5. It's 10, 5 goes up at 45 degrees, minus 45, and 145 degrees, 135 degrees. Uh, the challenge then is the departure angle. The departure angle is at what point do the angles add up to 180? Tells you how to get the asymptotes. So here's what it actually looks like. To find the departure angle, what I like doing is evaluate g of s at this point, just a hair to the right. In that case, the angle is 1 out of 180. The departure angle is whatever it takes to make the angles add up to 180. So add up all these angles, I wind up at 37 degrees short. So I need to add 37 degrees. Since this is a pole, with poles you subtract, this needs to be minus 37, gives you double negative, plus 37 degrees. There's your departure angle. So it comes down at minus 37 and goes to this asymptote. This breaks weight minus 15, goes to that asymptote. And on a test, you'd get the root locus plot, at least the complex part, add the rest. From the graph, you can kind of see that this angle ought to be slightly negative. If you calculate it correct, this angle should match the graph. And I do that because on tests, people will have MATLAB if they're working at home. Uh, just make their everybody has the same starting point. Problem two looks at an approach angle. If you have a complex pole, it's called a de departure angle, complex zero, called an approach angle. In this case, what you do, I've got a pole at plus one, minus four, minus five, minus six, a zero at plus minus j3. So these two poles come together, split apart in the middle, pulled right, pushed right, and go to the zero. These come together, split apart, and go to their asymptote. So that's the open loop poles. The real axis loci is when there's an odd number of poles to the right. That's between plus 1 and minus 4, minus 5, minus 6. Breakaway point is right here. And there's another breakaway point right there. It's minus 5.5. And I missed this one. Uh, J-mega crossing is search the J-mega axis to see where the angle is at up to 180. And it turns out they actually do add up to 180 right here. That's where the root locus crosses the JMEG axis and comes in from the right. I have four poles, two zeros, meaning two extra poles, two asymptotes at plus minus 90 degrees. The asymptote intersects at minus 7. <clears throat> so there's the asymptote. Now to calculate the approach angle, again take this point, J3, take a point epsilon away from J3, analyze G of S, and what you wind up with is g of s at s equals j3 plus epsilon, you know, like plus time, 1 times to the minus 6, is not 180 degrees. To make it 180, I need to subtract 67. So that's the approach angle. Since this is 0, I multiply or add. I need to add negative 67 degrees to get it add up to 180. So that's how I come into this 0. I come in at minus 67 degrees. And there's your root locus. 
Problem three is gain compensation. Suppose I have a 10th stage RC filter. Come up with a feedback gain that makes it as fast as possible with no overshoot. And I'm going to use a fourth order model, a third order model for the plant. In that case, what I would do is draw the root locus, poles at minus two, minus 30 come together, split apart. The quickest response with no overshoot is the breakaway point. So there's S. Uh, to find S, it's pick K so that G times K is minus 1. If S is minus 14, this is G of S at that point. It's negative real, meaning I'm on the root locus, but the gain's wrong. Pick K to make the gain 1. K is 3.14. As a check, if I close the feedback loop with that value of k, there's a pull at minus 14. That's the one I just placed there. And there's two other poles. It's a third order system. This says I'm not quite at the breakaway point, but pretty close. When I'm done, I'll have poles, dominant pole at minus 14, minus 14.19. Settling time is 4 over 14. The air constant kp is the DC gain. So here's k. Here is G. What is the product as S goes to zero? That's Kp. Kp is 1.7. So the steady state error is 1 over Kp plus 1, 36%. If I plot the step response of the closed loop system, that's what I see. I don't go to 1. I miss by 37%. No overshoot. There's your settling time. Problem 4. Suppose I could tolerate some overshoot. In this case, I can tolerate 20% overshoot. Now design a gain compensator that gives you 20% overshoot in the step response. So again, the step, the trick is to draw the root locus plot, draw the damping line for 20% overshoot. That's zeta's 0.4559, angle 69 degrees, um, tangent is 2, so there's your point, minus 10 plus j20. Find the spot on the root locus that intersects your damping line. That gives you S. Once I know S, pick K to make the gain 1 at that point. So here's G of S at your design point, negative real, almost. Pick K to make the gain 1, K is 12.1. Try it, and there's your complex pole, there's the pass pole. The eigenvalues are almost where I placed them. I put them at minus 10 plus J20. This says, actually, that's not exactly on the root locus. This is the point that's on the root locus. That tells me these are my closed loop dominant poles. The settling time is 4 over the real part. The error constant is the DC gain of G of S times the DC gain of K of S, which is 6.8. So now I have 12% error for step input. But in the step response, it's quicker, less error, but in return, I get a slight overshoot, 20% overshoot. Finally, problem five is suppose I want to speed up the system. Design a lead compensator in the form of S plus A over S plus 10A. Basically cancel a pole, stick it 10 times further out. So I'm going to keep the pole at minus 2.6. I need that to reduce the steady state error. This is the one that I cancel. Pick A to cancel the pole at minus 30, put it at 300. Gives me my new system. Um, I pull it 30 became 300, 302. Draw the new root locus. Find the spot on the new root locus. So there's minus 2, minus 53, minus 302. These come together, split apart. Find the point on the root locus that has a damping ratio of 0.4559. Solution is minus 23 plus J45. Uh, da -da -da -da. To find k, pick k so that g times k is minus 1 at that point. So here's g times k. At, there's my s. Evaluate, and I get a negative real value. Gain's wrong. Pick k to make the gain 1. k is 330. So there's k of s. And the check is form the closed loop system, gk over 1 plus gk. That's what the closed loop dominant pole is. Uh, take the step response 
uh, with my closed loop dominant pole. Settling time is 4 over the real part. Kp is the DC gain, 18. So notice with lead compensator, I get a faster system, better tracking, only 5% error. And that shows up in this graph. Here is 1, I only missed by 5%. And the last problem is design a circuit to implement KFS. In that case, I've got three constraints, four degrees of freedom. What I like doing is pick one of them. Like, let's make this one meg. As s goes to infinity, this is a short. s goes to infinity, the gain is 330. So this is 1 over rc is 330, solve for r, r is 302k. This is a 10 to 1 ratio, meaning that this guy right here is 9 times. That's the ratio, minus 1, is this guy. So the total is 10, this is 1 tenth, that's the remainder, 9 times. Uh, these two together are your RC time constant. So there, 1 over RC is 30. I know R, solve for C, here's your circuit. And that is homework set number 8 for ECE 461.